Hi, welcome back in time. We're going to the 1930s and read the actual words from the Los Angeles Times newspaper, dated March 14th, 1933. If you get a second or two, try out my second channel, Life in the 1800s Newspapers. Much obliged. This newspaper has a lot of interesting articles and advertisements, and if you stay to the end, there is quite a few comics. So let's stop wasting time and get started. School romance pair back from honeymoon. Mr. and Mrs. Robert Young. Robert Young motion picture player and his bride, the former Miss Elizabeth Henderson, returned to Hollywood yesterday following a honeymoon of a week. They were married in Santa Ana as the accumulation of a romance that began at Lincoln High School. The bride is the daughter of Mrs. Maud E. Henderson and graduated from the University of California in 1932. They plan an extensive honeymoon later. Santa Monica, March 13th. Marlena Dietrich, motion picture star, attired in a gray suit of mannish cut, appeared at the Santa Monica police station today to report that a 50-piece coonskin robe valued at $150 had been stolen from her Rolls Royce when it was parked in front of the municipal auditorium here last night. The robe was a most valuable adjunct to the equipment of her car, Miss Dietrich said. Harry Wright, her chauffeur, said he had seen four youths hanging around the car. Police are investigating. Bandit pairs rob housewife and motorist. Two bandits held up Mrs. Nettie Klein in an apartment house of 401 South Kenmore Avenue and took $10 cash from her at the point of revolvers and escaped on foot. In another robbery, D.E. Wilson of 1252 West 59th Place lost $12 in cash to a bandit who jumped on the running board of his machine and forced him to the curb at Figora Street and Santa Barbara Avenue according to police, when Wilson slowed down for a traffic signal. In the year 1933, on March 10th, Long Beach, California had a devastating earthquake. It ranged 6.4 on the Richter scale. Mothers and babies sleep in Pullmans. Rendered homeless by the earthquake, more than 400 women and children slept last night in the comfortable security of Pullman cars parked on a Southern Pacific spur at Long Beach. The children, most of them babies, and their mothers are being cared for by 18 nurses and two doctors. A locomotive attached to the Pullman Hotel provided heat and hot water. Another railroad contribution was the huge Southern Pacific hospital car rushed from San Francisco as soon as word of the disaster reached that city. The elaborate Hospital on Wheels, complete in every detail as to operating room facilities, dressing and instrument equipment, proved a welcome addition to the city's facilities for handling the injured. happened in the quake. Strange incidents of heroism, narrow escapes, queer tricks of heaving earth come to fore amid more serious aspects of Southland Tembler. Santa Ana, the only major brick building in this city which escaped material damage, was a two-story school structure condemned by the city two years ago as unsafe. It was being used today as the center of relief activities. Mighty Leap, 
Huntington Beach. How a father with his seven-year-old daughter in his arms leapt across a yawning chasm between two portions of the 2,000-foot pier over the ocean here and saved their lives by inches was recounted today by W.S. Ebert, owner of an auto camp. Ebert, his daughter Virginia, and his elderly father were fishing on the end of the pier when the quake occurred. The pier writhed and twisted and the ocean surged and boiled. Ebert started to leap into the sea with the child and attempt to swim ashore, but Virginia slipped from his grasp and ran screaming down the rocking pier. Ebert and his father dashed after her. Where the new 500-foot section of the pier joins the old 1,500-foot, one, a gap two or three feet wide, had been created by the shock. Despite the raging water below, Ebert took the child in his arms and leapt across, his father following, and all three of them stumbled onto the shore. Norwick fish went sightseeing during the quake at Carmaceta near here. All the goldfish in a pond on the Ray Molina ranch were hurled from the water onto the grass. Members of the Molina family, having rushed outside anyway, following the tembler, discovered the fish gasping on the ground and succeeded in saving them all. The fish seemed no worse from their experience. Though members of the family said they looked a little dazed. Leaping Skillet, Hermosa Beach. Up steps Bill Wheeler of 325 6th Street, Hermosa Beach, with an earthquake sizzler. Bill was frying a couple of nice thick sea bass steaks when the big shake came. Although he says he isn't much of a sprinter, he believes he beat the rumble of the shock out the kitchen door. When the world came to, Bill sidled inside to survey the wreckage of his feast. He lighted a match, and there was his big iron skillet sitting right side up in the middle of the kitchen floor, the fish sizzling merrily on the hot grease, not a drop of which had been spilled. Bill said he lighted a candle, put the fish back on the fire, and enjoyed them for dinner a little later. unheeded warning. In spite of all warnings against the practice of accepting rides from passing motorists, the fair sex continues to take chances. Two women, whose efforts to break out of the county jail at Santa Rosa were crowned with success, sought to expedite their departure from the vicinity by solicitating a ride. The driver they waved down was the officer who some time previously had made the original arrest. Try number two. Mm. Well, when you get to a hundred, wake me up. I think I'll write that book after all. Yeah, I'll think of all the fun you had, though. Uh, do you mind if I try? You? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're such a smart Alec. Nobody knows anything but you. I'll stop a car and I won't use my thumb. What are you going to do? It's a system on my own.
Aren't you going to give me a little credit? What for? Well, I've proved once and for all that the limb is mightier than the thumb. Why didn't you take off all your clothes? You're going to stop 40 cars. Well, oh, I'll remember that, but we need 40 cars. <laughs> Contending that the motion picture career of baby Peggy Montgomery, juvenile film actress, has been damaged to the extent of $501,650 because of an asserted breach of contract, Jack Montgomery, her guardian, yesterday filed suit for that amount against James and Lucille Gleason, Norman Spear, Charles Paddock, and the Norman Spear Production Picture Producers. According to Montgomery, he entered into a contract June 6, 1932, with the defendants wherein Baby Peggy was to appear in nine featurettes that the defendants employed here in one picture, but that in the second and third of the series, another child was used instead. Propagandist Named President von Hindenburg today appointed Dr. Joseph Goebbels as the Reich's Minister of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda, with Walther Funk, the government press chief, as his state secretary. Dr. Goebbels is one of the outstanding members of Hitler's party, having been chief of propaganda in the Nazi movement. The propaganda ministry is a new departure. Dr. Goebbels will control all government avenues of publicity, such as the press department, broadcasting stations, and motion pictures. Einstein seeks Swiss retreat, Vienna, March 13th. Friends of Professor Albert Einstein have received a request from the distinguished scientist to rent rooms for himself and his wife at Lugano, Switzerland, where Dr. Einstein proposes to work until the situation in Germany changes. It is understood that Professor Einstein will leave New York Saturday on his way to Switzerland. You'll hardly believe your eyes. First class bus fare to New York, $39.75. Same fare to Buffalo, Washington, Philadelphia, Baltimore, and many others. Union Pacific stages. Why sit in the office on your afternoon off, Harry? It's a beautiful day. I'm just finishing nine copies of a chain letter I received this morning. I must mail them to nine friends. I don't want to, but I'm afraid to break the chain. I think you're crazy, but if you'll seal those letters, I'll mail them for you. Thanks awfully. Just a minute. There's only one place to mail this kind of rubbish, and that's in an incinerator. That poor idiot will never know the difference. Think of the labor I'm saving those nine victims and 9,000 others. Of course, you are a believer in technocracy. What a quaint old-fashioned boy you are! Don't you realize that technocracy is passé? Why, I chucked that weeks ago. It's as dead as mahjong in miniature golf. The smart thing now is the jigsaw puzzle.
Of all the careless men, my biggest platter. It just seemed to slip out of my hand. Look at it, smashed in a hundred pieces. Gee, I'm sorry. Say, I believe there are a hundred pieces at that. Do you get me? Do you mean... We lose an old platter, and we get a new and exclusive jigsaw. I think that piece goes there.